A quorum of the city council being present. Let us all rise to salute the flag and then pause for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Welcome to the special meeting, September 29th of the Cambridge City Council. This meeting is being recorded with audio and visual devices. We to start the meeting with the call. You are hereby notified to attend a special meeting of the City Council for Thursday, September 29, 2016 at 5.30 in the Sullivan Chamber. This was, meeting was called by by order of Her Honor the Mayor. The purpose of this meeting is to, is to vote on extending an offer to a finalist for the position of city manager and to de designate an acting city manager to serve in that capacity until a new city manager is appointed. Additionally, the city council may meet an executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with the prospective city manager or or to conduct negotiations with the prospective city manager. The city council may vote to request that the city enter into a contract with outside council to advise the city council in its contract negotiations with the prospective city manager. This meeting may be subject to the rules of the city council as amended. So before we get into the body of the meeting. I just have a few opening remarks. We're going to then hear from Nancy Glower, our city solicitor, after which the floor will be open for public comment. There is a sheet. It was a sheet. There's, there's a sheet that's um, available. I'm going to send it back just in case someone else wants to sign up. Oh, okay. People can sign up on the sheet that is at the front after the public comment is closed and we will open the, the council floor for debate. I would like to um, extend an invitation to Nancy Glower to come forward just to go through some important items uh, that have come up in discussion regarding the city manager search process. Ms. Glower, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I was asked to um, speak to the council regarding a particular question which relates to the public release of two documents related to the city manager search process. Um, these two documents were given to the city council, I believe sometime Monday or Monday evening. One of them is a summary of comments from community meeting, city council interviews, and the website. And the other document is a summary of panel interviews and interview um, scoring from those from those panel interviews and Monday night during the council meeting we received a public records request for those meetings after um, one of the counselors I believe Councilor Marr stated that um, based upon advice from the law department they weren't public at this time we subsequently conducted our review and our legal research on Tuesday and determined that these were both public records and thereafter, they were released um, to the public. Does that conclude your comments? Yes, through you, Madam Mayor, that, that's what I was asked to speak on. If there's anything else, of course, I'm happy to answer questions. Are there any questions from the council before we move to the next step? Madam Mayor. City Councilor Greg Kelly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Ms. Glover. Just to clarify, that this wasn't an option that we felt we had. The document was created, and once it was created, it became a public document, or how does that work? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, yes. The, we looked carefully at all of the available exemptions pertaining to evaluations and personnel information. Since this is now part of the public process where the city council is interviewing candidates, and since these uh, panels included members of the public as well as city employees, 
um, it was determined that there was no exemption that applied and that therefore these documents uh, were public records. Thank you very much. Councilor Devereaux. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Ms. Glawa. Um, have the identities of the people who served on the panels been made public? Because I, I don't know who they were. Ms. Glowa. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, no, not to my knowledge. Further discussion? Hearing none, thank you, Ms. Glowa. Before we go to uh, public comment, it's important for me to announce publicly uh, as, as we came to this finalist uh, process, there were three candidates. One of those candidates, Jay Ash, has pulled his name from contention. So he will not be in the final consideration of candidates for city manager. I say that for two reasons. One, as we go forward as a council to deliberate, you'll know that we'll not, we will not be deliberating over three candidates. We'll only be delivering, deliberating over Two, so we cannot, by our rules, deliberate or talk about someone who is no longer in contention. And I say that as we, before we start public comment, we cannot make remarks about a candidate that is whose name is not in contention. We we have two candidates still. Um, Mr. Ash is not one of those. So um, as we go into public comment, I would um, remind people to speak, if they speak about candidates in particular, uh, they cannot bring up a name of someone who is not any longer in the running. We will now move to public comment. Public comment is that part of the meeting where any individual can speak to an item before us. The items before us are the candidates, the two left standing, Mr. Featherston and Mr. DePasquale, uh, for a period of three minutes. Uh, the clerk will be running the time. At two minutes, 45 seconds, you'll hear a series of beeps, which means you have 15 seconds to wind up your comments. Thank you. Our first person that has signed up for public comment is Donald Sheehan, followed by Katifi. Kirande. Yes. Your mic is on. You think I should know that? I'm an electrician. Uh, not a technician, though. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Council is on. Thank you for your time. I will not take the three minutes. I know you're very busy. You have a lot on the agenda, uh, and I'm going to speak straight, strictly to the issue. Um, I know it's a very tough job trying to select the city manager, all the great candidates you have, but I'm going to ask you this. Please keep in mind that we, from the building trades, are looking for somebody to support our values. Uh, we need companies that come into Cambridge and work. They're going to hire Cambridge residents. They're going to pay and have a pension system, have health care and an apprenticeship. Uh, as you may have seen coming in tonight, we have a company right down the street here that does not do that. So if you could please keep that in mind uh, when interviewing and selecting this person, that they have some of those values. Uh, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to the people that live in this community. We happen to have a company that's in from New York. Uh, nobody lives in Massachusetts that works on that project on the street at 625 Mass Ave. So if you would keep that in mind, would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is, it looks like, Katifi. And if you could say your name and maybe spell it for us, that'd be great. My name is Katiti Kirande, and I'm a, I've been a Cambridge resident for over 50 years. And one of the things that is really concerning me is the development that's going on in this city that seems to be out of control. And whether or not the city councillors or the manager knows this, there's whisperings that Cambridge is for sale. We need somebody who comes in here who can balance this for us and really think about us. Because, for example, I'm a small landlord. I own two properties. And last year when I was renting, I did quite well. And this year when I went to rent, the uh, rental agent said to me, well, there's a glut on the market and these big developers are here offering people three, four months free rent in order to, you know, to entice them. Well, I can't afford to do that. And, and, the, and the real estate lady said to me, well, you know, these guys are in the pocket of, uh, the, the city councillors are in the pocket of these people. The fact that people think that, by the way, not all of them, but the fact that the citizens out there are thinking that 
is not good for the city council. So we need somebody at the head to, t to take a grip of this thing because it really is feeling like our city is out of control. And it's not as though I'm saying, well, we own Cambridge and we don't want other people to come in. No, but we do want to preserve a certain quality of life. We don't want all the congestion. You, you drive by our reservoir, it's practically dry. Uh, there's just, development is, is just rampant around here and there needs to be some, something done and we need somebody at the helm who can really take control of this and, and help us out because we want to preserve Cambridge. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Okay. Is there anyone that has not signed up to speak that would like to speak on the record before we close public comment? Hearing none. Pleasure of the City Council. On a Madam, motion Madam by... Mayor, I, I think our public comment traditionally stays open until 6, so I would recommend that we Council spend Kelly public asked, comment and start talking and okay, then we Council can... Council Kelly asked that we keep public comment open to 6 o'clock. If no one has any objection, then we will do that and we will move on to the... Uh, meeting. I would like to give Council Lamar an opportunity to speak brief, give a historical, brief historical account of the process, after which I will turn it back to myself for opening remarks, and then we'll open the floor for discussion. Council Lamar. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and um, I want to thank my colleagues and thank all of the members of the public who have, have participated, uh, and the staff folks who have participated in this uh, process. Um, as you know, Mr. Rossi uh, informed the council back in March that he would not be seeking an extension to his current contract, and the council uh, entered into um, a process over the past six months. Um, and I, I want to just kind of run through this, that um, it was in April that we um, developed the RFP in consultation with the purchasing agent, Amy Witz, who uh, assisted the council uh, significantly in the development of that. Uh, the RFP evaluation committee was formed in April and May, and I want to acknowledge and thank Councillor Carlone, Councillor Devereaux, Councillor Kelly, and Vice Mayor McGovern, who along with three um, city staff members, um, all high-ranking staff members of the city, um, formulated that evaluation committee. Um, as a result of that committee, GovHR um, was hired. Uh, they were selected unanimously by the group, and GovHR was the uh, search firm that worked with the city council over the past many months um, to conduct this uh, search. In particular, I want to thank uh, Joellen Earl and Heidi uh, Vordhe. Am I saying that correctly? I'm looking at, at uh, Sheila. Um, and uh, Lee, their associate, who all worked with us in this process. Um, as you know, that we developed a list of um, uh, focus groups that we wanted to be conducted uh, as part of this, meeting with many members of the public, uh, as well as um, everything from large and small businesses to the universities to um, neighborhood associations, in, in fact, we conducted, uh, they conducted more than 30 focus groups during the uh, month of June. Um, in early July, as a result of all the information that was gathered, there was a leadership profile that was developed, um, which really helped to um, explain to uh, prospective candidates what the city of Cambridge was all about and what type of person we were looking for to head uh, the city um, for the next many years. Um, <clears throat> in July and August, um, GovHR conducted a multi-pronged recruitment effort, um, and um, they <clears throat> um, started to pre-screen, so to speak, uh, candidates. In August, we had the preliminary screening committee was formed, and the preliminary screening committee consisted of um, 15 folks that that uh, fit into categories. Uh, there were uh, resident representatives, there were large business representatives, small business representatives, representative, um, 
a Cambridge Public School representative, public safety, person with demonstrated knowledge of municipal finance, a health and human service public health representative, a representative with um, knowledge of city, city planning or urban development, a higher educational uh, representative, a public art or recreational representative, an affordable housing representative, a nonprofit representative, and a representative who ad advocates for the quality of our community's civic and social well-being. And in addition, there were four city councilors who um, participated in that process, Councilor Chung, uh, Councilor Mazin, Councilor Toomey, and myself. Um, and that committee was put together, excuse me, was appointed by the mayor. Um, that, that committee's job really was to look at the candidates that GovHR had presented. And GovHR had taken the applications, which was, were, were approximately 55 people from across the country had applied for the job of city manager here in Cambridge. Um, they had uh, kind of tiered the candidates and presented to the group all 55 names but they um, had the 15 people that they thought were the highest or the most qualified candidates. Um, and so there was an in-depth review of those 15 candidates. Um, that group, um, the pre preliminary screening committee, um, had the authority to basically decide who was going to be interviewed by the preliminary screening committee. And they offered interviews to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember my numbers here. They offered interviews to eight individuals, and of the eight, six people took the committee up on their invitation to um, interview. Um, the committee conducted those interviews, and I want to just say to uh, folks in the community, these folks gave up um, three full days of their time um, and, and in every case had to be there for a training day and a, and a, and a um, day that we were, went over the um, resumes and then to go through two other full days of uh, interviews and then the decision-making aspect of that. So I want to thank all of the members of the um, preliminary screening committee for the great work that they did in presenting to the city council the top three uh, qualified candidates. So what you saw is at the end of that process was three names being, being forwarded to the uh, city council. Um, those three individuals went through uh, then a series of um, um, interviews in getting to know you, um, one of which was the public uh, town hall, which occurred at the high school on 920. The second was um, the city council public interviews that were held here on 921. Um, in addition, the three candidates met in small groups with the city council, um, and the, so each city councilor was able to spend um, time over a breakfast or lunch with each of the three candidates to get to kind of informally get to meet those candidates. We, uh, late in the process, added, um, there was some time in between uh, the breakfast and the lunch and the other lunch and the um, town hall. So what we did is we added some panels and we had, we, we had three different panels um, and uh, we invited in uh, Sheila, Kitty, Rawson and myself looked at um, inviting in um, city staff who were both in a managerial capacity but in a line capacity as well as a number of individuals who had applied to be on the screening committee who were not selected. So there were about, we extended the invitation to about 50 people and I believe about 42 or so, 40. Was, it, was that what it was? 27, I'm sorry. 27 people um, took us up on that because it was a commitment that had to be made over two days, uh, again, that they had to be here for all three hours. We didn't want somebody to meet one candidate and not meet another, so we required that they had to be in on all three. 
Um, and um, let me just make sure I'm right here. So that was the 21st and the 20, 20th and the 21st. And here we are um, on um, September 29th. As I had mentioned the other night, um, in addition, um, GovHR did some additional um, reference checking. Um, those references, references were available to the council to uh, peruse and look at. Um, I know that many, we received many uh, emails and letters and, and uh, there was no shortage of opinions from folks that had seen um, uh, uh, the interviews or had seen the pub public forum. In addition, we invited at every, every uh, juncture, we invited the public to offer uh, written comments and to turn that in. And that was what Ms. Gloa talked about um, because that available was kind of gathered together and it was given to the council on Monday. Um, it was released to the public on Tuesday. And um, I also want to just thank um, several people that helped tremendously in this uh, long six month process. Uh, including Nancy Glower, the city solicitor, um, Fran, Fran Cronin, who works in for me in my office, uh, Lee Gennetti, who made sure that all of the uh, public documents were made available in a timely fashion, um, Sandra Albano, who helped coordinate the site visits, excuse me, the uh, visits of, of all of these candidates into Cambridge, and Mary Ellen Cavallo, who also was tr a tremendous help. Um, and with that, that brings us to this evening, and um, it is my hope that um, folks have um, been able to reach a decision based on not one of these things, but kind of all of these things together. And, and I would just add that I think that we've been able to see these candidates um, to meet them privately. We've been able to see how they handle themselves in front of a larger group. Um, we have seen how they answer questions on um, in a room like this that is televised. Um, some of us have seen how these folks conducted themselves in the confidential aspect of the, um, of the uh, process in those initial interviews. Um, and so I think we have had a variety of ways of judging how these candidates um, present and what they are about. And, and um, I'm delighted that this is all coming to an end. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor Mark. Thank you. The floor is now open for discussion. Councilor Chung. Thank you. So I just wanted to, if, I think, echo the words of thanks to Councilor Mark to the public. Um, although I, you know, I've had, I'm sure many of my colleagues have we've had calls saying, you know, what do you think? Who are you doing that? And I've been said, you know, I can't, can't answer that. I'm not sure yet. I'm trying to get information in. But all the people that have written in, uh, that have emailed in, um, even if I have an email back directly answering your question, I really appreciate the uh, the public getting so interested and so involved and being proactive about uh, weighing in with the council and letting us know what's important to you as we make our decision. Uh, I also wanted to th echo the thanks to the staff who have put a lot of overtime and hours into making this process run as smoothly as it has. Uh, to you, Mayor Simmons, and especially to um, Councilor Marr, I think uh, you have run the best process for selecting a city manager that we have ever had in our entire history as a city of Cambridge. Um, <laughs> true, uh, we, we have not done this before, but um, I think regardless, I think this was an extremely thorough, this was an extremely thorough process. Uh, we hired one of the best consulting firms available in the country. Um, they brought in, I, I think, a, a tremendous panel of candidates for the selection committee and for the council uh, and for the screening committee to consider. Um, I know that there's, you know, we had multiple opportunities for the public to get involved, to get engaged. We had lots of opportunities for the council, as you mentioned, to see the candidates in different, uh, pers in, from different perspectives, whether it's on, uh, in this, on this floor, uh, in front of the public, uh, talking individually. Uh, we had lots of opportunity for, um, I think, us to see uh, how they're interacting with the communities. I think that was all very beneficial to the council in terms of making a decision. Uh, and also, I think that, uh, you know, there's, there's inevitably criticism. Um, you know, that, and I want to speak to one directly, which is about why isn't there more diversity? 
uh, in the pool of candidates we have to select from. And so I served on the board of the National League of Cities for uh, multiple years, was down at their board retreats, went to the International uh, City Managers Association meetings, and felt there what I often feel, uh, what I often notice, I'm in a, I was in a room of a bunch of white men. Uh, you know, and, I, and, and this expectation that Cambridge should have a, just a more diverse candidate pool at the, uh, at the, at the end result, I, I, I subscribe to that goal, but sitting in that room and seeing all the city managers across the country, I know that it's not necessarily realistic. I think that, contra you know, conversely, Cambridge is going to have to be in the position of being a net exporter of diversity. Uh, we have a clear value uh, of di diversity in the city. We have, we're a sanctuary city. We're constantly trying to, talking about bringing people in and making sure that the community reflects the public, uh, the staff reflects the public, uh, and, and then investing in our staff. I think that all over, we're gonna be a ex net exporter and having to raise people up, get people in, making city management offices across the country more diverse because I've seen other city manager offices and they're not as diverse as ours is. Uh, and so, I, I, well, I would love to be in a world where we put out a call for, for applicants and we had a really diverse pool. Uh, I don't fault, I think there, there can be no fault placed at the feet of uh, the consultant or uh, Councillor Marr because it just is uh, the reality that we live in a world where racism and prejudice uh, continues to exist. And we are, I think, a leader in fighting that. And that, that leadership is going to come in the place of giving leadership experiences and, and promotions and uh, um, development to, to uh, candidate, to people that work, want to work in city offices. Uh, I think ultimately, as I think about this decision, I just want to say, I think the, cult, the council ultimately has the responsibility to choose uh, to make this decision as we're going to tonight. And we're facing very, very serious challenges. We, we're in the middle of a housing crisis. Uh, you know, our technology use in the city is you know, we don't even have credit card meters, our pay-by-phone meters like Boston and Somerville do. Uh, we have we've put so much on our planning department that the department is, is you know, threatening to collapse under the sheer weight of all that we've put up there on their plate. Uh, we have a police and fire department that are still without a contract. Uh, as we've heard early tonight, we have uh, organized labor uh, who's still struggling to to realize in real terms uh, the values that 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 we as a council have endorsed and we need to support them in that. Uh, and I think also, as was, as was said, this feeling that Cambridge is for sale. I want to make sure that we have somebody who doesn't to come in as a city manager thinking that as Cambridge is a project or a job, as something to solve, but as somebody who's living, though, that, real, that very real feeling that, that the public has, has expressed and that I think all of us share, and that we need to balance all of this out and make sure that we're, we're serving our residents uh, that we're keeping all that is good. Cambridge is a leading city, and when it comes to environment, when it comes to uh, when it comes to finances, when it comes to place and fire, when it comes to leading on moral issues and economic issues, uh, we need to keep all of that going, but at the same time make some bold choices and, and bold decisions uh, to solve the challenges that that we're all dealing with and that our residents have expressed to us. Uh, so, you know, I, I just to to say, I, I'm going tonight. Uh, we had three tremendous candidates who came and that we had the opportunity to speak to. They all had really great qualities. Um, I'm ultimately gonna, gonna uh, wanna support Louis de Squally, uh for this next city manager uh, for a few reasons. And I just wanted to express them to my colleagues and also to the public at large. Uh, the Cambridge has a lot of balls in the air. Uh, we've got uh, Envision Cambridge. We're trying to uh, make sure that we're keeping uh, light, the city affordable for, for residents. Uh, which we have so many projects going on from Volpe to Alwife uh, to, um, you know, improvement of our schools to building new buildings. There's a lot of stuff that the city is currently doing. And Louis is going to be able to step in day one knowing where all those balls are and how to catch them and keep them in the air. Uh, and I think it's no knock to any other candidate. Um, but they would ultimately, if somebody hasn't been working here, they have to cut, step in and try to figure out, you know, where is everything, do an assessment. Uh, and I don't want to lose anything that's going, that's currently in the air. I don't want to lose any of the good that Cambridge is doing uh, for the fact of us trying to do better. But we do need to do better. Uh, and Louis also, I would say, has a track record of delivering on the impossible. I don't know how many times he's come to the council and said, we, we have a, I, we're going we to redo four schools, uh, as, as Councilman Mark came in with when he was mayor. Uh, we want to build a new library, wanna, you know, going back. And he's had an ability over the years to, we, it's like, he's like Scotty from Star Trek. We asked him to do the impossible, 
he tells us it's impossible, and then all of a sudden it's like he's got a printing press for, he's got a money printing press in the basement or something. He somehow manages to pull, pull it all together and figure out how we can accomplish our goals financially. Uh, and, and finance is a bit like lawyers. Uh, you know, you go to a lawyer, uh, they can tell you why not, how things will not work. Uh, Finance is the same way. You can go to the finance guy and they'll tell you why you can't afford something. Uh, but then there, was a, those lo there are some lawyers and there are some finance guys who will figure out the tricks in the book and how to make things work so that you can actually do what you want to do. Uh, and I think Louis is not just recognized in, across the country as one of the best financial leaders, but also recognized as somebody who knows how to put finances together and make it work to achieve our goals, to achieve our objectives, to do the best for the community, not just to tell us why we can't do something. Um, I will also say, I think, uh, you know, people might say, offer criticism for ultimately uh, supporting an internal candidate. Um, I don't think that was, that was not in any way predetermined from the offset. I think he emerged. A lot of people, we didn't even know that he was going to be putting his hat in the ring to run for city manager. Uh, he emerged, though, as the best. Uh, and I don't think that should be a surprise, frankly. Uh, even though no one expected that, um, Cambridge is a leading city when it comes to when it comes to finance. When it comes to you know, we've put more into affordable housing than any other community in Massachusetts. We've done more for we have so many services for our residents. We're leading on on uh, on health. We're leading on environment. We're leading on police fire. We're leading on so many areas. I don't. It should not be. It, it is a bit of a surprise, but it should not be a surprise that we frankly have the best talent of any city in the country. Uh, and I think we did not ex didn't know that Louis was going to run. Didn't know really what to expect from this process. Uh, but I think through it, I've gotten a deeper understanding of exactly why Cambridge has been so successful, because we have such talented people, and, I, and it's counterintuitive, but I don't think it should come to a surprise as anybody in the public uh, to know that uh, when you are looking for a city manager, it's not a surprise that we have the best candidates uh, right here in Cambridge. Uh, so for all those reasons, I'm, I'm going to be supporting um, uh, Louis de Bisqualdi to come in as our next city manager for Cambridge, uh, and I don't think that you know, it, it, you know, I would tell to him, uh, my support of him is not because I want necessarily just continuation of the status quo. Uh, I want him to support our employees. I want him to value our employees because they are the best in the country. I want him to keep everything going that is going right for Cambridge. But I also want him to come in with an expectation that he has, that we're expecting him to make some pretty bold choices and do things differently. Uh, because we, we have severe challenges in housing. We have severe challenges uh, in transportation. We have severe challenges uh, in making sure that we close the achievement gap. And we want somebody who's going to come in and, and bring in fresh ideas. If he doesn't have those ideas, go and find them and then bring them in, uh, but really provide some bold leadership and work uh, <coughs> with the council and the community and the staff to make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can do to make life better for our residents in all those areas. Uh, so that's my two minutes. Sorry for going on a little bit long, but I want to make sure that the public understands uh, that this is not... Um, just a back of the hand decision that this is, I think, very thought through for myself and I'm assuming for all my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chung. Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Madam Chair. I too support Louis. It's actually an odd place for me to come to. When it first started, I didn't know what to expect and I didn't think that I would wrap my arms so thoroughly around him, but he has very much impressed me during the various interview processes that we had in particular. I think that he gets finances in a way that no one else does, which is super important. I would say it's also the biggest weakness I see on Louis's part because I never heard him during the talk that he had with us express the downside of the strong finances, which is an immense amount of development that is in fact changing things in a way that not everyone is comfortable with. And I think we as a council are going to have to help Louis understand that there are two ways to look, probably more than two ways, but at least two ways to look at tax revenues. Uh, I was super impressed at the way he has a vision for approaching our university and business partners and how we can work with them to help our schools, to help our nonprofits, to help our communities design systems as partners rather than having everything be a one-off for individual people. I was very, very impressed with his repeated statements that when you go into City Hall, you should be able to find someone doing something that looks like you and his explanation that he has led that process in his department. I think as a council, we're going to have to continue to push him. I could go on at length about why I'm, I'm voting for Louis, but I, I think the challenge isn't with Louis. 
the challenge is with us and whoever succeeds us as a council to be really clear about what is worth the city's time, what we really care about, and what trade-offs we're willing to make. And my advice to Louis when I talked to him was, should, and I said this to all three of the candidates, should you get the position, you need to be able to push back on us and say, no, that's, that's just not something that is worth my time. And we all need everyone to be able to walk away from these positions if it comes to that. The relationships properly with good communication, which I fully expect, it will not come to that. But I am excited about working with Louis. And, you know, honestly, if you'd asked me years ago that I would be saying this, I, I wouldn't be. But, but he has thoroughly convinced me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. I don't believe anyone else signed up for public comments. So I'd like to entertain a motion to close public comment. On a motion by the Vice Mayor to close public comment, all those in favor say aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Public comment is now closed. We go now to the Vice Mayor. You have the floor. Thank you. So I too would like to thank everybody from the community for participating, whether, um, whether that was uh, being a part of the steering committee, a focus group, sending us emails, um, coming to the public forums. I want to thank Councillor Marr as well for leading the process. Um, and I'd like to thank the candidates themselves who applied to be our next city manager. Um, it was a demanding process and we were fortunate to have uh, three strong finalists. So I based my decision on who I thought would be the best fit for our community. All the finalists have impressive resumes, so the choice was not an easy one. Being the city manager takes someone who's able to work with the community and the council in a true partnership. It takes someone willing to think creatively, but not recklessly. And in my opinion, Louis De Pasquale is that person. Louis known for being collaborative, a collaborative, experienced, passionate, open-minded, and respectful person. He's flexible and willing to compromise. His civic engagement goes well beyond his professional life and his understanding of our community is unmatched. We need to look no further than the document discussed Monday night, outlining our accomplishments over the past three years to see that we are doing things that no other city is doing. No community is rebuilding four schools without state money, while at the same time expanding early childhood education, moving toward becoming a net zero community, and many other initiatives, all while providing a level of service and public safety second to none. Now, does that mean we should keep the status quo? Absolutely not. We must never be complacent. But I believe that Louis, if given the chance to lead, will be a city manager of vision and will be willing to think of new ways to keep Cambridge moving forward. And that's why I'm supporting him for city manager. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor McGovern. Pleasure of the City Council. Councilor Toomey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First of all, I want to thank you for appointing me to the uh, committee. Um, it was quite an honor uh, to be part of this process. And um, to all those individuals who served on that, I think it was four five days that they gave up of their time uh, to serve uh, to serve the city in the selection process. And um, it was a, a tremendous experience for, for all of us. There were many opportunities for the public to weigh in uh, with community forums, at the high school, here at the city council chamber, people stopping you on the street, giving their opinion. Um, a lot of emails came in um, on weighing in on this issue. Um, and um, it was quite remarkable to see how it all unfolded. And to be, to be part of that, I think it was the first, we were part of history as part of the first actually a selection process for city manager under Plan E, and uh, so it was quite something. Um, people worked very hard on that, and uh, I want to thank um, Council Maher and our personnel director, uh, Sheila, for uh, being um, very informed and keeping us to the issues, what we were, to, uh, uh, what we, where we could stray and not stray, and uh, asking certain questions and on the process. So. Um, it really was, um, like I said, an honor to be part of that. There were great candidates that, that applied uh, for this position um, from around the country. And uh, it was great to sit, be part of it, to 
hear different perspectives from around the country and within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and how people would bring their talents and their experience to the position of city manager in the city of Cambridge. And um, each one was quite different and unique in their own ways. And uh, it was, it uh, helped me a lot to um, appreciate uh, what we have here, you know, and um, to help me form my decision. They were all great candidates, so the, the uh, finalists, um, for one I think withdrew at the last, well, even before one of the eight uh, withdrew for personal reasons from Texas, and so there was I think six that we ended up uh, intensive interviews with. Um, and after listening to everybody, after talking to a lot of people and in the community and my, uh, within uh, the city, um, I have come to um, my decision to vote for Mr. Louis de Pasquale as our next city manager. Um, one of the, some of the emails that came in recently mentioned about vision, and, and I just feel that Mr. de Pasquale has tremendous vision for the city. Um, he's a product of um, our school system growing up in the city, um, has seen the major changes that have taken place in the city, and I believe his vision is to continue the excellence that we have, and to most especially the vision of bringing in people who are currently really not involved in city government, uh, reaching out to people uh, for whatever reasons just don't seem to be part. Um, and it would be good to get some new perspective here on Monday night's council meetings and at community forums of people who have you know their own ideas too, but for whatever reason, just felt that they didn't. Whatever reason, didn't feel comfortable maybe coming to or uh, speaking uh, for whatever reason. But I think he has that vision. He's been in the community for so many years. He's been involved with the Babe Ruth and, and Little League uh, for many years. Volunteers at different uh, events, and. Um, Clearly, the, the fiscal experience, uh, being part of this city for, I believe it's over 41 years, uh, since 1975 when he first started here. Um, and, you know, I can attest to his, his great character and honesty and his vision uh, for the city. And the commitment to the city and to its residents, uh, whether they're young, families, seniors, um, He's out in the community almost on a daily basis, and he's listening to people, and he's learning from people, and I think that's the most important thing, that he, he's a good listener, and takes everyone's and respects everyone's opinion. And so uh, we've had, I've had the great honor of serving under uh, two tremendous city managers, and uh, look forward to continuing serving with another great city manager, uh, who will certainly, I believe, put the best interest of all, all of our citizens uh, first. And I think that's so important. So I am uh, proud to say that I will be voting for Mr. Louis D. Pasquale uh, here this evening at the appropriate time. We'd like to uh, put it that in nomination uh, for, for a vote once uh, my colleagues have uh, commented. Um, and I hope that, um, that it's successful. And, and, uh, and it's not an easy job. It certainly isn't. It's not an easy job, uh, and a lot of people think it's you know everything is everything runs so smoothly. But you know behind the scenes, there's a lot of things that has to take place. And knowing that Mr. De Squall has seen that inner workings of how to bring people together and to resolve to come to a acceptable um, resolution for everybody is just so important. And that's why we need to continue that uh, as we move forward. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Toomey. Pleasure of the City Council. Council Mazin. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Um, first, my thanks to Richard Rossi, who has sat in that chair and in that chair and every chair um, late, late into the night um, and uh, now getting some much deserved rest, hopefully, in the years and weeks and years to come. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thanks also to uh, Mayor Simmons, to Councillor Marr uh, for the hard work on this process. Thanks also uh, for the hard work of, of the candidates, the administrators, the panels, the activists, and the, the residents, the people of, of Cambridge. 
Um, it's been an interesting process, and in many ways it's been a beautiful process, and to the extent that it's been beautiful, it's been because of the people and because of their love of Cambridge. I don't necessarily know that I always agree with the process, um, and, and I'll say below that I don't totally agree with this process, but uh, everyone's love of Cambridge was clear, and, uh, and no one can be faulted for their hard work uh, along those uh, values. Um, but our highs and our elation uh, just can't can't completely obviate critical insights, so I'll, I'll do my usual thing and, and say what I think we'll do better next time. Um, I don't think we appropriated enough money for the search. I think a search like this, if it's truly nationwide, has to be a headhunting search. We, we, we didn't headhunt outside of Massachusetts. It's hard for pension reasons. But this is a $275,000 plus position, and the plus is still big money on top of that. We could have really gotten excited candidates from all over the country if we had um, spent the money and the time to reach out. Um, that's not to say that we didn't get great candidates. It's to say that I think uh, we all recognize, um, or at least many of us, uh, us on the inner search committee, that, that there's more work to be done in diversity, uh, gender parity. There's more work to be done in creating a really vibrant search discussion within the city. And, and for all the vibrancy we had, it, it could have been yet more engagement of the public, more engagement of ideas and commitments and plans, specific commitments, specific commitments to this council in this room. We could have three gentlemen right there vying for who can make the most commitments about specific plans um, and, and uh, not pie in the sky either. These are, these are talented people who know uh, what to promise and, and, uh, and how to remain realistic. Uh, we did not, uh, as a council, negotiate from a position of strength uh, on those issue commitments and social equity plans, on financing vision. We did not extract promises on new or innovative thinking. Uh, this is a city of innovation, and I think we've seen the, the seeds of that in Rich Rossi's administration. I think, I think we have a lot uh, of, of time and, and uh, space ahead of us to make up even more um, progressive uh, and uh, interesting uh, programming and, and uh, uh, internal training, and, and we, we didn't really consider that type of important discussion in this process. And we didn't even negotiate salary, which is again uh, a, a number into the three hundred thousands potentially. Uh, and we didn't we didn't negotiate from a position of strength. We're hiring first and negotiating after. Um, yeah. On, on to the good things. Uh, uh, Louis is a, a great candidate. I, I feel that that uh, our choices have been narrowed some, um, but still, uh, it's quite possible with all the choices on the table, Louis still would have been the best uh, uh, candidate. And in fact, I think um, uh, that's probably where my heart lies. Uh, it's a difficult decision. Um, I probably support Louis for other reasons than than I've heard here. I. I um, I like his open door. I like his uh, gracious spirit. In, in, the, in, in line with Rich Rossi's service, he seems like one of the Cambridge's kids, someone who's excited by the job and energetic to serve, uh, and someone who's talked about good government, someone who's talked about hard work, open door, and, and the, the phrase of the last week or two weeks for me has been shame on me if, right? Uh, someone who heaps shame upon themselves in order to do better, I think, is a strong candidate for the highest uh, seat in the city, someone who will, will blame themselves but not endlessly, just, just to, to be better, to strive to be better and to encourage others to be better around him. Um, so uh, um, I support Louis in this given uh, his tenure in the city, his experience, uh, but I do so with specific hopes. Uh, I hope that we will take a serious look at going beyond inclusionary housing and into proactive city led and city-owned housing on our parking lots, uh, on uh, properties that we can make a more aggressive place for through our bonding schedule. I hope that we will talk about, seriously talk about social equity and educational equity and really think about job training for jobs in Kendall Square. There are a host of national, state, and local programs that can aid us in this. I want to talk about uh, our spaces, like the foundry building, spaces that we'll never have back again, or the Volpe uh, project and plan, how we can work with the administration, how they can guide us, how they can shepherd us, and how we can relay our concerns, 
in a consensus-based way, how this, this chamber can be a place of discussion and ideation, not of finality and brevity. Um, granted, I think we should all probably be brief in these statements, but, uh, but I don't mean, I mean that the process, uh, the process itself does not have to end at 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. The process must only achieve a better Cambridge and an equitable Cambridge, something that has eluded us for a long time. And there's smart minds, there's experience in the community, and there's goodwill in, in all of these council seats and in all the administration seats. Um, <coughs> and lastly, I hope what I, what I uh, don't hear, I hope what, what uh, Louis is able to graduate into in this role and what uh, many before him, including Rich, have done um, very often for us. I don't want to hear that Cambridge can do anything because we have the money and that we're lucky and it's a, an embarrassment of riches and all the wonderful things that I agree with, but then I don't want to hear that if we start to do those things that it's going to raise taxes. We're spending half a billion, uh, two-thirds of a billion dollars on our bond schedule for schools. I think that's great. We talked about having a debt, uh, a borrowing plan for $32 million over the next year, I believe Louis said in some of his comments. What does that 32 go to? Does it go to the foundry? Does it go to the priorities we have, as a council have set? Do we have control over some of that bonding? Will we be proactive in planning and goal setting? I sure hope we will. I hope that we can achieve the things that we've set out to do as a council without being uh, uh, cowed by uh, uh, the threat of higher taxes or the fear of higher taxes. I hope that we can establish fair taxes, low taxes, equivalent taxes as they are now for all of our residents. I hope we keep them low, the lowest in the state, I've heard. I hope we continue that for our residents, especially those who are house rich and cash poor. But then I also hope that we take a serious look at those uh, nonprofits, those um, equity projects, and, and those priorities of ours to achieve them uh, in very short order. And that's a tall order for Louis. That is, um, uh, and those are big shoes to fill, Mr. Rossi, but um, I'm sure that we'll be able to have an honest and diligent discussion about what we need to do even better to be able to achieve those things. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mazin. Pleasure of the Council. Madam Mayor. Oh. Councillor Devereaux. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through, through you to my colleagues, I guess I say. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking this week in particular with this decision and also with some of the um, events and forums I've attended as part of the annual Hub Week. Um, and it really has made me think a lot about the future, the future not just of this city, but the future of this world. Um, this week I attended a forum at MIT that was uh, entitled The History and Future of Innovation in Massachusetts. It was sponsored by the Mass Historical Society. Um, and then the next day, yesterday in fact, I um, attended uh, an event, a talk by Robin Chase, who's a uh, Cambridge resident, the founder, co-founder of Zipcar, and now is a major thought leader. Um, and she talked about the, the changes that we're going to be experiencing uh, in the blink of an eye in our economy, the global economy, um, it, it, climate change, it's happening a lot faster um, than we can think. And one of the exercises she does when she speaks, and she speaks all across the country, even at the White House, is to ask everyone in the room after she's given her talk, which is a fairly sobering talk, to close their eyes and to ask, do you think that we can achieve these changes through evolution or revolution? And she asks revolution second, and then she says, leave your hands up and, and open your eyes. And she says that every audience that she addresses, even uh, at the White House, 95% of the hands are still up for revolution. Um, so the systems that we have globally in, in America, in Massachusetts, in Cambridge, are not the ones that are gonna achieve the changes that we need to make uh, without <laughs> revolution. And I hope it's not violent revolution, I hope it's thought revolution, and I hope it's back to innovation. Um, one of the th points that they made at the MIT talk was that Massachusetts has had four major, you know, economic upheavals, and we've always managed to innovate our ways, our way out of this. Um, and that, at the end of the day, it's taken a lot of courage. 
um, courage to challenge the orthodoxy, courage to get out of our comfort zone, courage to stretch, courage to question our priorities, even if they're considered the best practices of the era, even if we are a model for the rest of the country or even the rest of the world in some areas, to push ourselves to, uh, to reinvent ourselves and to create even better practices. Um, so we can't rest on our laurels because speaker after speaker told us that our success, even our, you know, our very existence is incredibly fragile. Um, so we, we really need leaders, and I'm not speaking only of a city manager because that's placing an awful lot <laughs> of responsibility on the, the shoulder of, of one person. Um, we need leaders in the community, we need leaders in this chamber, we need leaders um, to, to join with us and help us make those changes. Um, so, you know, until, until yesterday I had intended to vote for a candidate that I that I thought I would help us in this room as the city's policy makers um, summon the courage to be bolder than we've been um, and to be a partner to help us be our better selves. Um, the, uh, we are, you know, we are the policy makers. I think, you know, in some of the communication that we've received, um, there is some confusion um, about what the role of the city manager is, what the role of the council is, who makes the policy, who executes it, how that dance works. Um, one of the candidates asked me if, you know, if I felt th that relationship was, uh, that the city manager is the council's subordinate, if the city manager is the partner, or if the city manager is in charge. And I said, well, I, I hope it's, you know, that we're partners. Um, and so, you know, I, today we have a, a choice of two excellent candidates. Um, one of them we're on a first name basis with, as has been evident tonight. Um, and you know, when I was running for office, I, I said I would, I hope that we would take seriously um, the chance to bring in a fresh perspective when we hired our next city manager. That we owed it to ourselves. Um, I've, you know, in my short time on the council, I've been um, extremely impressed with the work that Mr. Rossi has done. Um, it's you know, it's amazing, and I and I want to echo everyone's thanks for his decades of service, his intelligence, his compassion, his open-mindedness, his willingness to listen, and his willingness to make hard choices. Um, but I still believe, at the end of the day, that change would be healthy, healthy for us. Um, that said, <laughs> the process that we put in place, and I and I do have a few questions about that process, like. Um, like Nadim has mentioned, uh, the process that we put in place has has failed essentially to yield us a candidate um, from the outside that I think that we can um, trust with these big opportunities. And as others have said, we have a very highly respected and very competent uh, leader in Mr. De Pasquale, um, whose commitment to Cambridge is unquestioned. His integrity is rock solid. Um, I received emails from several friends uh, whose children he coached in Little League. One of them brought tears to my eyes, um, hands down. He was a great coach and mentor to those young people, and that, that says a lot. Um, the game is changing for us, though. <laughs> Baseball's rules, I think, are still the same. I'm not a huge baseball fan. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, I think they're going to be a whole lot more curveballs. Um, and they're going to come fast. And so I hope um, that when Louis is our next city manager, that he will be willing to partner with us um, as we grapple with these challenges. Because um, the old rules that he has played by and that he has uh, managed so well over the years to bring us such success in the financial dimension um, may not be adequate. Um, so I, you know, it's a, it's a big responsibility. It's our, it's the council's biggest job. Um, I'm new at this, so I'm, you know, I want everyone to know that, um, I gave this a tremendous amount of thought. I haven't slept a lot this week, not only because there've been so many meetings and so many other things to, to think about and so many emails to answer. Um, but I have given it a lot of thought and I will support Louie with my colleagues and I look forward to working with him. Um, 
I know that he really wants this job and that he's a competitive guy and that um, I think he will listen. And I think his goal is to be an even better city manager than his predecessor. So um, that's, that's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to do. Um, and I hope that we can support him um, so that he can succeed in that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Devereaux. Councilor Carlin. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to say um, in the beginning that the process that uh, David Marr and the mayor put together um, was an excellent process. I regretted that I couldn't be on the committee of four counselors who worked with residents and business people to select the finalists, but I totally ag agree that the three finalists were a good group of people to consider, each having strength in areas and weaknesses, perhaps in others. After all, they're human. Um, it, it's, I have a, this might be heresy to say in Cambridge, but I have a belief that any thriving entity needs outside perspective periodically. That's not saying that what we've had um, is, is, is not great. It's just that you need that enrichment, a different way of doing things. And, um, and that's why, and I told Louis this on Friday, that I was going to vote for someone else in the first round. And I also said, but Louis, you're going to win. That's pretty obvious. And um, I actually felt that a long time ago, that it was pretty obvious, um, given his record. So each candidate, um, whether they might have been weak in the first public forum, in person, um, you saw, at least in one candidate who's still in the running, a different person, more relaxed and very sharp with very good ideas. I happen to have a relationship, a working relationship with another candidate who's withdrawn that I can't talk about, but just to say, uh, I was highly impressed with him. And although there were sayings being whispered that he was not good to people, what I saw as a lowly consultant uh, refutes those comments. We, what, what concerns me, and, and Louis and I spoke about this, is that this, for three years now, and hopefully it'll happen soon, we've not set goals. The goals in the past were not specific as a council. And that although affordable housing is our number one priority, we put less than 3% of our budget into it. And I just don't get that, and I brought this up three years in a row, and I keep being told, well, in the future, in the future. The golden era is now. Um, recessions occur in the country every eight years. Well, it's the eighth year. That's not saying a recession is coming, but the golden era might not continue. Uh, which I guess you could say is a plus because Louis could handle with that better than any. What I do love about Louis, and he, he alluded to it or came right out and said it, is that he wants to reach out to residents everywhere. He wants each of them to feel this is their home, this is their city, and that their words are listened to. And I, I don't necessarily think that hasn't been the case the last three years. In fact, I think Rich Rossi has gone out of his way to open communication and meet with anybody. But the fact that Louis focused on that, um, to me, was impressive. But I must add that of all the emails and personal conversations I had, um, they favored a person who is withdrawn. Uh, by about two to one. And again, I think that's more 
an outside person with a background in affordable housing and physical planning than anything else. So I think Mr. Featherston was extremely articulate and bright in person when we met in groups of three counselors with him. And that didn't necessarily come across in the first public meeting. In the second meeting, he was better and um, not as much as uh, in shock with this whole new world and perspective and deep, complex questions. Um, Louis has many things going for him, including the care of the council. And he's promised a lot. Uh, I have no doubt he intends to meet all those promises head on. Um, and uh, that's where we are. So I also will be voting for Louis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Carlone. Councilor Ma? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I want to just pick up on um, two things that I neglected to do. One is to acknowledge and thank um, Donna Lopez and Ms. Paula Crane, who, who helped us tremendously in, during this process. Um, and, I, and I think I did not adequately acknowledge and thank Sheila Keedy Rawson for all of the fine work as the co-chair of the screening committee and then has been extremely helpful to me over this uh, five-month process, six-month process in making sure that everything was on time and being able to be delivered. Um, you know, I think that, that I, I just want to touch on, on the, the process itself and say that I think that the process resulted in three very highly qualified candidates. And I think that, um, like all of us, each of them has strengths and each of them has weaknesses. And I think we got to see some of that in this process. Um, in the end, I am picking up on a word that, that uh, the Vice Mayor mentioned. To me, in the end, this comes down to the word fit. Who is the right fit at the right time uh, for our city? And I think that, you know, when I think of um, Lou, Louis D. Pasquale, um, you know, his passion, his commitment, his love of the city is quite evident in everything he does. And I think that um, you can see that in the way that he talks about this city. And I think Louis completely understands where we are at this juncture. And I think it's a very significant juncture that we're at right now. I think when we look at some of the biggest issues facing this community today, the issue of affordable housing, the issue of income inequality, and how working class families are struggling to stay in Cambridge, um, Louis gets it. And, and um, you know, I think that, that everybody here has made very good points, and we could look at this, and we probably all do look at this slightly different and from a different vantage point. But at this time, my belief is, is that Louis D. Pasquale is the right person to continue us through the, the, the time that we are in right now, and a time where I think we are seriously looking at the issue of affordable housing. You know, and, and I will say, I have, I have heard firsthand the passion that Louis has when he talks about families and the struggles that they have in this community. The commitment that he has around diversity in this, in this community is something that I think we could all learn from. And, and um, so I, for me, I think that this process has been extremely positive because somebody else mentioned it on this side of the room and I can't remember who it was, but you know, we know people, we see their interaction with people, we see the work that people do, but sometimes we may not think about that person in another job or another position. And when Louis announced that he wanted to be the city manager, I have to be honest that I stopped and I said to myself, now, is that the right move for him? Is it the right move? And my feeling throughout this process, he has demonstrated 
that this is the right move for him and it's the right move for us to make at this time. So I'm very pleased to uh, support Mr. De Pasquale. At the same time, I thank and acknowledge, I think the tremendous effort of, of the other candidates who put their name forward and the courage that they had in order to really think about ways that they could help us in Cambridge. And I think that, you know, I, I just want to mention one thing, that I think that it also causes us to look at who we have in Cambridge, the staff and the commitment and the leadership that we have in Cambridge. And one thing that I kept hearing over and over again from people from across the country and other cities was how, how well respected the city of Cambridge leadership is in other circles. And we should, we should remember that. And um, this is, uh, I believe, a good day, and, and we're going to have many, many good days ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Mar. Uh, so let me just make my con concluding remarks or my remarks before we go to the vote. I must say we should be excited. I feel like I've seen more excitement in this room over the tax rate. Um, but we, we should be excited because Cambridge is very extraordinary. We are, and when you look at Cambridge in terms of the present, because of the leadership that we've had, we are in a very good place. I mean, people want to be, they want to live in Cambridge, they want to work in Cambridge, they want to visit Cambridge just so they can enjoy what goes on here. And we should be excited about that. And I think through that excitement, because Cambridge is such an extraordinary place, we were able to have what I would, I call a rich experience where people wanted to come and apply to be in Cambridge. I had the pleasure to serve in this city since 1980. Um, I have worked with five superintendents, hired two of them. And I can tell you when I match that process to this one, the processes were very similar. A lot of engagement, a lot of outreach, a lot of participation to yield good candidates. And I think we certainly did this. And so I, I feel very pleased and um, excited because we are so in such a good place in terms of our present. I think Mr. Rossi, I think he's here somewhere, for the work that he's done and brought to the city. And now it's time for us to kind of look for the future. What do we want the future of Cambridge to be and how we, we should be excited and direct and engaged about what we want to do going 5, 10, 15, 50 years from now. I, I want to pause just to thank those that got involved, uh, starting with Councilor Mar for taking on, you know, as the chair of government operations, taking on this job of shepherding through this hiring process. Um, I want to th thank the, the individuals who put their hat in the ring to vie for this position. Um, I often say that, you know, this is the job that everyone. It's a hard job, and so that's why not everybody wants to do it. So very important, robust, good candidates came forward to apply. I also want to thank the screening committee for giving their time, their energy, their expertise to, to vet the candidates that came forward. And also to the members of the public for weighing in on what has been, I think, unquestionably one of the most consequential issues before us, the hiring of our city manager. In the last few weeks, the City Council, the people of Cambridge have started to become acquainted with three finalists for this job. And I think each of them brought tremendous assets, skills, experience to the table. And while most of us are familiar with, with applying for a job and going through a whole interview process, one has to say, if you come to Cambridge and you really do go through a thorough vetting and public process and being willing to put yourself under the glare of the public of spotlight as Mr. Featherstone did, as Mr. De Pasquale did, and as the candidate who later um, demurred have done, I, I think it's impressive that these individuals have would put themselves through such a strong and robust process. So as I weighed the choices before me, I want to know let people know that I didn't get to this decision easy. I didn't lose a lot of sleep over it, as maybe you did, uh, Councilor Devereaux. I had other things to lose sleep over. But I, I, do, I, I do understand the intensity of thought that one comes to and participates in. You know, in an ideal world, the city, city manager has to be energetic, collaborative, creative, a dynamic individual in their own right with their own vision of how they see Cambridge and how it should be run. 
but someone who also has to be open to other ideas, the ideas of others. This individual must be able to lead their staff and be respected by their staff, inspire their colleagues, and continually be ready to meet the unique challenges and opportunities that, that our city has to offer. This person has to be knowledgeable and have a, an appreciation for the kind of community Cambridge has been over several decades, but also have a sense of what kind of community Cambridge can and should be going forward. And certainly this person must be able to successfully engage and interact with nine very opinionated people, very enthusiastic bosses, and do this seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Some of the things that I am looking at when I look at the new, who is our potential next city manager will be the assurance that the candidate, the individual, will pay great attention to creating a diverse, collaborative, and supportive workforce in the city. Someone that's going to be fair and clear to how to find the path to success and the achievement of every city employee. One where there is no wage equity gap between men and women. One which every employee has the opportunity to rise as far as their talents, abilities, and ambitions will take them. I want to be sure that we create an environment where small grievances are addressed and resolved rather than allowed to fester. I want to be sure that we have a workforce that reflects the diversity of our city. I want Cambridge to be a model in terms of promoting and nurturing the talent that exists amongst us. And I think we've made those strides toward that in recent years, but we still have many rivers and bridges to cross. And I'm committed to working with our next city manager to help us get to where we need to be. I want our next city manager to be aggressive as possible in working around the issues of affordable housing Far too many of my friends, our friends, and family members have moved out of Cambridge over the past 20 years, and I give great credit for our outgoing city manager on the work that he has put into helping preserve and create affordable units in the city, but we know we need to be better, we need to be faster, we need to be bolder, and we need to find a new way of tackling what is one of the, the primier, or premier challenges facing our community. I want our next city manager to be open to new ideas and how we operate as a municipal government and take a look at how we engage with the community and each other with fresh eyes. With each new term, we, we each are new city councilors and with each new city manager, we have a terrific opportunity for self-reflection, course correction, and an opportunity to, to take stock of what works what doesn't work, and what might need some adjustments or improvements. I know that we cannot change things overnight, but it doesn't happen, and it doesn't happen with just one person. But I am genuinely excited about the opportunities that we have in front of us. I, this is, you know, for someone who has served the city for such a long time, I have never had the opportunity but once to hire a, a city manager. It was a good vote. It was a vote I stood up to and for. Uh, there were a lot of detractors around that choice, but I'm glad to say that the person that we chose then proved them all wrong, and I was very pleased about that, and I think that the person that we choose now will do the same thing. So this evening, I will be voting for Mr. Louis De Pasquale, and I truly look forward to working together to build on all the things that we already do so well, but to go and find new ways to improve that what has gone well. You know, my colleague on the school committee, Fred Fantini, would always say, the enemy of best is good. So we not only want to do our good job, we want to do our best job. And so having said that, I will yield the floor to, I believe, Council Toomey, who wants to make a motion. I want to recognize Mr. Harding from our school committee. Thank him for being here. Council Toomey, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move that the Cambridge City Council make an offer of employment as city manager to Mr. Louis D. Pasquale, conditioned upon the successful negotiation of a contract the terms agreeable to both parties. Roll There's call. a motion on the floor by Councillor Toomey. This will require a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Callum. 
Yes. Councilor Chung. Yes. Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Kelly. Yes. Councilor Ma. Yes. Councilor Mazin. Yes. Vice Mayor McGovern. Yes. Councilor Tune. Yes. Mayor Simmons. Yes. And the motion to offer an employment to as city manager to Louis D. Pasquale has passed by an affirmative vote with nine in favor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I would like to, um, given th th that historic vote, uh, I would like to offer a motion that the City Council appoint Lisa Peterson as an acting city manager commencing on October 1st, 2016, and continuing until a new city manager is appointed, and that during her appointment as acting city manager that she be compensated with a weekly stipend of 1000 in addition to her regular salary. Is there discussion? Uh, there is discussion. discussion. Councillor Mazin. Is there any reason we wouldn't compensate her at the rate of the current city manager divided by 52 or Mr. 275 divided by 52? Madam Mayor. That's a question. I heard a Madam Mayor. Councilor John. I just, I just, I think the, uh, you asked about the before, the $1,000 um, brings, I guess, the salary up to the minimum that was advertised. Um, so it just seemed like a good basis to take the number on. Further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilor Calhoun. Yes. Councilor Chung. Yes. Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Kelly. Yes. Councilor Ma. Yes. Councilor Mazin. Yes. Vice Mayor McGovern. Yes. Councilor Toomey. Yes. Mayor Simmons. Yes. In the motion to appoint Lisa Peterson as the acting city manager, Commencing October 1st carries on an affirmative vote with nine in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Council Mayor would like to offer another motion. Council um, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, that the City Council requests that the city enter into um, a contract with Elizabeth Valerio and John Foskett of Deutsch Williams um, to advise the City Council in negotiating a contract with the prospective city manager. There is a council order on the floor. Is there discussion? Council Mazin. Why this firm and what are our goals? Uh, I'm, council I'm, Ma. So the, um, the, the firm is the same firm that we have used to negotiate Mr. Rossi's contract um, and kind of reshape that contract. We've been working with this firm over an, a few years now. Um, it's outside, outside legal counsel. Um, you don't necessarily want to have um, in-house legal counsel negotiating a contract for what will then be their boss. So you bring in a third party. Um, Ms. Valerio and Mr. Foskett are both very familiar with the reshaping of the contract and have advised the council on how to do that. Um, in addition, both uh, Mr. Foskett, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Foskett is the lawyer that was hired by the school department to negotiate the new contract with the new school superintendent also. Uh, Council Mazin. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's helpful. Um, do we have a goal for what the plus means and do we have a term length of the contract? I think that we should probably have some kind of guidance for them before we hire them. Council Mazin. The, the, the first step in the process will be you bring the, the attorney in we will have a meeting. We thought we had a time, but there's a conflict. I, I had Sandra going around the room. We're going to have a meeting, hopefully next week, where the nine city councilors will meet in executive session with the attorney, and we will go over the parameters at that time. So we will develop a length of, uh, desired length of the contract, the salary range. The attorney then will deal with Mr. De Pasquale's attorney, and that's how the negotiation will, will occur. Uh, okay. I, uh, Council Mazin. I don't want to get too pedantic here, but again, in terms of the order of things, generally <clears throat> uh, one would ask uh, a vendor if they feel that they can achieve certain parameters before hiring them. Are you confident? Can you hit the marks we're trying to hit? Is this feasible? What, what's common in, in the industry? And then you hire someone to achieve those things, and you achieve that by, by a deeper dive into the basis and into the, uh, the, the details. To hire someone and then say, do you think you can achieve this? Then what? 
we, we certainly want a partner who feels competent to achieve our goals, and I don't know the first thing about these folks. Will they be competent well, think, to achieve our goals? I think, that, I think that for, uh, and I think that probably, and I'm looking here, two, four, five, six, I believe six of us have worked with this firm in one capacity or another. They have been extremely responsible in helping. Um, what, what, I would, what I would back up and say is, is that I think that the contract that Mr. Rossi has, his base contract, is extremely different than that of what Mr. Healy had at the time. Um, and that was done on the advice and the work um, over a period of time with this firm in how to reshape a um, current day contract for a municipal leader in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. Councilor Chung. I just, uh, as one of the people that was in the process, I don't want to go into detail in open, in open session because um, we're about to enter into the negotiation. Uh, but in my experience, I agree with you. Uh, and I think in, in my in working with the firm, they were very good about helping the council achieve its goals, which may be in conflict at this for this decision with uh, you know the person we're hiring because we're on the op opposite side of the negotiation table. But I think they were they were fair, they were thorough, um, and they were they, they were very good in, in accomplishing. Uh, a lot of things, so I, I would encourage you to to meet with them in the meeting and uh, and bring them up directly with them because I think they'll be impressed. Thanks. Roll call. I was going to ask for further discussion, but I guess I won't. Um, we'll call Madam Clerk. Councilor Calone. Yes. Councilor Chung. Yes. Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Kelly. Yes. Councilor Ma. Yes. Councilor Mazin. Yes. Vice Mayor McGovern. Yes. Councilor Toomey. Yes. Mayor Simmons. Yes. And the motion carries on an affirmative vote with nine in favor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's a pleasure with the City Council. Madam Mayor. Council to me. No, um, we haven't done this for a while, but this was a very important vote, and we're not meeting for another, I believe, three weeks. So at this time, I'd like to move reconsideration, hoping the same will not prevail. Council to me moves reconsideration. So we first have to move suspension. Move suspension of the rules for re so, uh, perhaps uh, reconsideration. Before we vote, so can, can I just say it? Please. Thank you. <laughs> Council Toomey moves suspension of the rules in order to move reconsideration, hoping the same will not prevail. Discussion. Council Masson. I, oh, okay, so first, this confused me the first several times that we did it, so I just want to uh, remember or discuss how it works. We move reconsideration, we all vote no, so that it cannot be reconsidered tomorrow, right? So that's just to make things final. We do this when there's an urgent deadline or when something is so important that one for optics or for logistics wouldn't want to reconsider it. Um, I also think it's safe to say that in this case, because we've all just spoken on Louis de Pasquale's behalf, that it would be very unlikely that there would be a reconsideration. And I just wanted to put that out there. But Thank so you. Be it. Further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call, Madam Clerk. On suspension. On suspension. On suspension. Councilor Calone. No. Oh, oh yes. yes. Sorry. <laughs> I still don't get it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm for Louie. Councilor okay, <laughs> <laughs> Chung. Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Kelly. Councilor Ma. Yes. Councilor Mazin. Yes. Vice yes. Mayor McGovern. Council Toomey. Yes. Mayor Simmons. Yes. And the rules are suspended on an affirmative vote of nine in favor. On reconsideration, hoping the same will not prevail. That's a yes vote if you do not want to reconsider. Reconsideration is for all of the items that were adopted. It's, did I say yes? Okay. Well, you know. Okay. It's the air in here. <laughs> okay. On the motion to reconsider, Councilor Calone. No, you no. don't want to I reconsider. I want to say no. <laughs> Councilor right. Chung. Councilor Devereaux. No. Councilor Kelly. No. Councilor Ma. No. Councilor Mazin. No. Vice Mayor McGovern. No. Councilor Toomey. No. Mayor Simmons. No. In the motion to reconsider, all the votes taken tonight fails on an affirmative vote with zero in favor and nine recorded in the negative. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Pleasure of the City Council. Move to adjourn. On a motion by Councilor Toomey to adjourn, all those in favor say aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned.
that it? No, not yet. 704. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, 